Yeah, welcome back to another video here in the off-grid garage. Today with a special experiment. <laughs> well, I tell you what, one experiment went wrong this morning. <laughs> I melted the cable. I charged this big battery here with my uh, solar charge controller. Well, it pushed in the 20 amps the controller can do, but uh, yeah, the cable didn't like that. So that's why you should always have proper cabling, right? But it was an experiment, so that's all good. Um, today I've got this setup here, which looks very familiar and very different, right? We've got one battery and we've got two different charge controllers here. And I'm charging this battery from both controllers at the same time. And it works perfectly. Each of the controllers is connected to one 40 watt, 22 volt solar panel at the moment. And this one here is the Vincong SL03 PVM solar charge controller, 30 amps. And this one is the SN, uh, SRNE, SRN, whatever says it here on the screen, MPPT solar charge controller. And both controllers at the moment are in float mode, floating mode, float charge mode, it says. There, float charge mode. You can see the LED is flashing fast. That means float charging. And we can see here on the display, this little thing here called PVM mode. So it actually has reduced the voltage to 13.7 volts for the battery because the battery is fully charged. Okay, and this all works totally perfectly. I've set the settings in the MPPT controller via the app, exactly the same parameters as I have here in the PWM controller. So in both solar charge controllers, reading the battery, they're getting the information from the battery, they read voltage, and it doesn't matter what kind of solar charge controllers you connect, and it also doesn't matter how many solar charge controllers you connect to this one battery. Okay. Okay, here we go. 14.4 is my maximum voltage here. And we have set this one to 14.4 volt as well. And then we've got the floating voltage, 13.8. Float voltage, 13.8. And this is my uh, low voltage recovery and my low voltage disconnect and the temperature compensation, three. This is three, uh, three millivolt. Yeah, this is all the same here. So all the parameters, let me push this one back here. All the parameters are the same now and everything works perfectly fine. So let's turn on the load. I've got some lights here, which we can turn on. There we go. And this controller immediately jumps from float charging into bulk charging. So this one reacts immediately while this one is still in float mode float charge mode it's called here and um, this one is a bit ah, it has just turned on the MPPT charge mode and we can see the LED is not flashing anymore so both solar charge controllers are now charging the battery up to 14.4 volts so and even if we turn off one of the solar panels for this solar charge controller the other one will still keep working on the other panel and keeps charging the battery we can see here 430 milliamps into the battery from the solar panel. And this is what I showed you in the last video as well here. The current showing in the app is totally off. We are measuring only 0.4 amps here, but the current here shows 0.8 amps. Totally off. And the same for what's coming from the solar panel, 0.61 amp. And if we measure here at the solar panel, we've got only 470, not 670. I'm still discussing with the Chinese. And of course, there's no power coming from this one. And if we turn this solar panel back on, you can see the symbol appears. And this one starts charging now as well. And now we can see 500 milliamps from this controller 
plus 300 400 milliamps from this controller okay let us change the settings on this solar charge controller here to 15 volt maximum voltage for the bulk charge and 14 volt as a floating voltage just for a test okay we exit all right now let's see what happens so they have now different programming this one will only charge to 14.4 volts this one will charge to 15 volts before each of the controllers entered float mode so what will happen well this one will go into float mode earlier than this one this one keeps just charging because it wants to reach the 15 volts now on the battery and this one says okay we have reached 14.4 i can stop charging and reduce the voltage to 13.8 and go into float charge mode okay this may take now 10 15 minutes until these statuses are being reached but i've played around with this setup this morning and i set them to completely different parameters for charging the battery and it still works totally fine the only thing is well the controller which has the lower values the lower voltage settings of course turns off its charging capability the first so this one in this case has only 14.4 volt set this one has 15 volt set of course as soon as we reach 14.4 this one will say yep i've got enough turn off so you will lose all the energy coming from this charge side. So all the solar panels connected to this controller will not contribute charging your battery anymore. But this one keeps charging because this one has the 15 volt setting and says, yep, battery needs more energy and keeps charging. So there's no problem if you have different charge controllers, even MPPT and a PWM, it doesn't matter. And to be honest, I'm not a big fan of having just one charge controller. I probably would rather have several of these solar charge controllers to different solar panels on different locations on your roof, different strings. You know, as you know, we've got about six, not about, six of these panels here. I don't want to run them on from one solar charge controller only. I will put these panels here in a series three each and then connect them to different solar charge controllers. And they are going on this roof side here. There are three panels there and there are three panels here. And I'll do this because, well, if you can remember maybe my, some of my very first videos I made here when I mounted the solar racks here on the roof. And especially in winter time, we've got shading of these trees here, of course. And this row of panels there so the further you go this way the more shading you will have and you don't want to mix these panels which are shaded with the panels which are working well and then later on we've got these 995 watt panels they are going on this side of the roof here so even the sun comes here from the east and then to the north yes this is north here going through the north and then to the west in the afternoon I will put panels on the on the west and on the east roof and they will be connected to different solar charge controllers because the controller can only read the overall the total voltage of these panels you know and if some panels are shaded they don't deliver enough energy not enough voltage to make a good reading while the other ones are still in the sun but the controller does like an average so it tries to balance everything out and gets the most energy from both sides. But if you have separate solar charge controllers, one controller can take care of the ones which are shaded and the other one can take care of the solar panels which are in the sun. So my thinking is now, and you know, we've got another six panels here and another three panels there. These are the nine panels I was just talking about. Well, this is, this is now my this is an extraordinary drawing actually this is my setup or this is my future setup this is what i think the setup will be at the moment i've got only these three panels here this is the 220 watt and the 240 watt panels which are used for for testing purposes over there so 220 watt each i've put them on the east side and then i've got nine panels 195 watts each and i probably 
Well, you remember one of my videos when I was talking about this nice switchboard panel I built here. And I was planning to connect these three here in parallel going through this switchboard. So I can actually I can actually connect solar charge controllers individually to any of these panels here. You know, so I can have them in parallel or I can have them in series, whatever I need for my experiment. Well, I'm not so sure anymore about this. I thought about this for quite a while now. Um, I'm not sure if this makes still sense because I can do all the testing with my existing switchboard like I'm doing at the moment here. And this one, as I said many times, 40, 40, 220 watts. So I've got everything already here. And if I have another switchboard here with three times 220 watt panels, does it make a difference? I don't know. Would I use it for any of these experiments? Probably not, because I've got these ones already. You shut up. So hence I thought I'm not using this amazing switchboard here anymore. And well, connect these panels all in a string, you know. I've got these three in a string and these three in a string. So I have my three string solar panel set up. And because we've got the trees here on this side, because in wintertime then the shading of the sun moves across the roof, because usually what you do is you put these three in series, put these three in series and then parallel them. And you do the same on this side and then you connect all this to one solar charge controller. But some of these cells will have shading in wintertime and some of them will not. How does this affect this one solar charge controller? Because it cannot determine if it's been shaded or not. So I thought it makes much more sense to connect all these five strings basically of serious connected solar panels to a separate solar charge controller. Is this more efficient than just one? I don't know, I don't know. This is just what I think and this is why I do this experiment at the moment to gain more information about what is going on when you parallel solar charge controllers. How much do you actually lose inside such a charge controller? And is it more efficient than one solar charge controller but does the same job? And that's what I'm going to find out. Because I could have used only one charge controller and then parallel these two solar panels and use them as the input for this controller and then charge the battery, you know. And when one of the solar panels gets shaded, so I turn it off, for example, here, it gets only half the input, of course. The, because the shaded panels are not contributing much to the solar charge controller if you have other panels in parallel. And that's why I thought, okay, if we use the shaded cells and put them onto a different controller, this one can work with the ones which are not shaded, which are in full sunlight, and the other one can take care and MPPT and optimize and harvest as much energy of these shaded cells, you know? But this is just my thinking at the moment. What do you think? Does it make sense to have five different or five the same solar charge controllers for this solar setup or should I group them and don't give a shit if some of the panels are shaded? I'm not sure what is more efficient. I probably find out and tell you. Maybe I make a video. <laughs> all right, guys, so far this quick video for today. Um, as always, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for all your millions of subscribers now. This is totally insane and so amazing. Thank you very much from the bottom of my heart for everyone who has subscribed and watching these videos, commenting, sending me messages and emails. Thank you very much. All right, guys, let me know what I should do. What's the benefit of having several solar charge controllers instead of having only one or two, maybe. All right, thanks again, guys. See you then, bye bye. Ah, before you go, we can now see this one here is in float charge mode, a quick flashing LED, while this one is still doing the bulk. And we have set this one to 15 volts, remember? And 14.4 it has in the battery at the moment. So this one has said, yep, I'm full. And this one keeps charging. Quick reference. Yep, there's zero coming from this charge controller. And there's 500 milliamps coming from this one. See, at the moment I'm wasting this energy because the programming is different. But well, with these controllers, you can set them to the same level and they would both charge the battery quicker.